The gestation for the Neomorph begins with small egg sacs containing the accelerant pathogen as found on Planet 4 by the crew of the USCSS Covenant. Coated in what appears to be mold, the tiny ovioids, about the size of a bird's nest, release the pathogen once disturbed. The egg sac is able to sense the proximity of potential hosts, spewing a cloud of microscopic spore, or motes, into the air. The microscopic dust-like spores are able to group together, instinctively entering the host's body via their facial openings, such as the nose or ear. The motes plunge a feeding tube into the host's skin, injecting eggs into the body and causing the gestation process to begin. Both Ledward and Hallett of the Covenant crew were exposed to the pathogen released by these sacs, resulting in the infections. While symptomatically similar, each led to the birth of a neomorph, differing only in the method of leaving the host's body once gestation is completed. The gestation of the neomorph embryo and the blood burster that follows appears to be much less stable than that of a xenomorph. The process is a lot more visible and quick than that of a chest burster, which carries comparatively little symptoms of infection until birth, and the gestation within the chest commonly goes unnoticed until the chest burster's violent escape from its human carrier. The infection of the neomorph embryo quickly causes painful debilitation. Massive perspiration and difficulty breathing begins as the host displays anemic-like symptoms. The forming of simple words becomes difficult as bodily functions begin to fail. The host begins vomiting blood and bile. In the case of Ledward, a series of convulsions and violent involuntary twisting and writhing occurred. Shortly, the bloodburster is ready to erupt from the host, beginning with its spikes shooting out from the back in the ribcage. The host's back ruptures, splitting open the ribcage in the opposite direction and releasing a placenta-like egg sac containing the parasite. The neomorph rips open the sac, still small, about the size of an ordinary house cat's, already appearing to grow further, and apparently immediately cognizant of its surroundings. The newborn neomorph, which came from Ledward, appears to take stock of the room before its attack on Corrine. Though in Ledward's case, the neomorph's dorsal spikes and pointed head ripped through his back as it emerged, alternatively, it is born through the mouth, ripping the host's jaw apart as it comes out, as evidenced with Hallett. Though no convulsions occurred, Hallett was heaving out gouts of blood until the burster ripped out from his mouth, splitting the mandible and maxilla open as the newborn creature exited, also rapidly growing, and violently attacking any perceived threats. If the neomorph is seen as an earlier, imperfect version of the xenomorph, then certainly this gestation and birth process would support this belief. Even in adult form, the neomorph is a more vulnerable creature, with thinner, translucent skin easily pierced by bullets, and lacking the acidic blood that serves as a defense mechanism for the xenomorph. This vulnerability is echoed in the gestation process of the neomorph, which doesn't exactly carry the same tactical advantages of the xenomorph. For example, from the instant a host is infected, the presence of a parasite is immediately apparent. For any observer, the host would be quarantined as soon as possible, whereas a host infected with a xenomorph chestburster would be able to interact with other potential hosts for a xenomorph hive, who would be none the wiser to the infection. The neomorph embryo grows incredibly fast compared to the xenomorph, which may take several hours, or in some cases even days, to fully develop. With no signs of infection and ample time, a xenomorph carrier would be able to travel and to spread the xenomorph spore further. Upon birth, the neomorph bloodburster is prone to attack any other organisms in range, while the xenomorph chestburster is prone to hide as it grows into a full adult. All of this can relate to the purpose of the xenomorph organism, to survive and to spread, not for each alien as an individual, but as a species as a whole. This is what drives the xenomorph, survival of its species, where the neomorph, we may gather from its actions, still has individual survival instincts, and thus not quite the perfect organism. Though maybe not the envy of evil androids everywhere, I personally thought the neomorph was a great addition to the Alien series. It was interesting enough, and different enough, from the xenomorph that gives me hope that the series will continue to try new things. But, do you think the Neomorph will be seen in future movies? Would you like to see it included in some way in future movies? Comment below and share your thoughts. And as always, I'd like to thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a like. And you can also subscribe for all the latest videos from the channel. And if there is a topic you'd like to see covered here, please let me know in the comments below. A very, very special thanks goes out to Will and Yutani Executive, M. Yorick, 
part of our Patreon Hive. I would also like to thank our Hive's queen, Lady Anne. If you'd like to join the Hive and support the channel, check out my Patreon page for exclusive posts and contests. In the meantime, you can catch up with Alien Theory over social media. Follow at Alien underscore Theory on Twitter and at Alien Theory YT on Facebook and Instagram for more. And until next time, this is Alien Theory, signing off. <laughs>